Hey everybody, welcome back today to Retro Tech, and I am excited to bring you the special edition CRT Market Watch. That's right, we're back. It's been almost an entire year since I've actually done a Market Watch episode. I know a lot of people have been really requesting this, and thankfully I had kind of a little bit of a mishap last weekend where I injured my foot in a boating kind of incident. It's like it was just a little John boat, and I kind of hurt my foot. And thankfully, nothing was broken, but it did put me out of commission on working on CRTs for a couple of days. So I had some time to do some heavy-duty research for you into the market of CRTs. Specifically, we're going to be looking at Sony PVMs. So let's just go ahead. We're going to get started today, and I will show you what we're uh, getting into. First off, we're going to be looking at Pro CRT Sales from eBay in North America. This is pretty much only going to be eBay again. Just in North America, anything that I could almost find and pretty much solidly verify was included. It's from the data is from the summer of 2021, the last three or four months. Sales are tracked in US dollars. We're going to highlight specific monitor sales that have happened. I've got a lot of details, including pictures of the listing and the actual listings. And then finally, we're going to round things off by looking at some market trends analysis and Again, all these are just eBay listings. I know I had a lot of people comment about other monitors that they had purchased outside of eBay, but I just wanted this to be very easy to track. Anybody wanted to go back and verify these sales can most likely find these. And so let's just go ahead and get into it. Now, usually I like to start with some of the lower end monitors, but we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the big bad boys. That's the Sony BVM CRT sales. Now, these are Typically, the most expensive CRTs will find sold. So let's look at what we have here to start off with. I want to show you some of the D9s that have sold basically since July. And we're looking at a total of six sales. Now, the sales prices are all over the place. The, the lowest price is at the bottom, which was an H1U, which that would not include normally a control unit. That's just the one that is only the monitor and doesn't tend to have any of these controls on it. The H5 is the one that has the controls like in the pictures here. And the big deal on the price difference here, it all has to do with the condition, the accessories, and the hours. Uh, so each one of these was listed as working, but there were differences in quality that made the prices be different. So that's Pretty much all there was for those D series nine inch ones. And let's move into some bigger ones. We had four decent 14 inch sales that were verifiable. Now, the interesting thing to me is the first two, and these are the most recent ones you'll see, are a 14 F5 views. And that's what I've got in the picture here in the top is an A14 F5 view. And that monitor is selling for easily over a thousand dollars. You even have one here for fifth over fifteen hundred dollars. And those do not include the RGB card. Those only include usually the SDI card. Some of them may include, the most expensive one may include the 61D, but I'm not even sure about that. And the other two are the D series monitors. So those do support RGB and those tend to sell for a little bit less. Now again, the H1U is the one without a controller and the five is the one that does have the controls along the sides. So just note, and in here right here is a picture of that H1U, and it actually included a controller, an external controller. You'll want to make sure when you're buying these monitors to pay attention to what bezel is inside of them. So there's a 16 by 9 bezel that does cut off some of the picture, and then there's a 4 by 3 bezel also. Now, those bezels are not as rare as the D9 bezels. The D9 seems to be it's very difficult to get that 4 by 3 bezel. This one the 14 inch is a much more universal bezel insert. So it doesn't matter which monitor you got your bezel from. You can insert it in any one of these 14 inch BVMs. Now let's look at the bigger ones. First off, we've got some 20 inch ones that I want to highlight. The 20G that was sold on October 1st for $900. So it's interesting to me, you could still find some 20 inch monitors going for about the same price as uh, some of those smaller monitors. The only thing here is that October 1st one was a pickup. So you're still going to be looking at pickups as being the biggest money saver. Same thing with that 1900 that's listed on September 13th. And then we do have some big sales. So we have a 20F that sold for $1,800, a D24 that sold for $4,800 plus 
and I say plus because it includes freight shipping. And that's the same thing with the D20. I'm going to show you some pictures of those, but just so you know, this picture right here is that 1900 that sold, so it was working, but it was another pickup. But again, that's a great price for a BVM that's working is 475 as long as there's not two burn in it. And since it's a pickup, you're definitely going to have an opportunity to take a look at it before ahead of time. So that person, those two people got incredible deals on bigger PVMs for the most part. And then let's see if we can't look at some of these uh, bigger sales. First off, I want to show you the D20. And this is a 20-inch game ink monitor listing. This is from the... Uh, famous Save on Pat. That's who actually sold this one. You could see the location here, Huntington Beach, California, and then the pictures. This was one of them that Save on Pat had sold. It had two bids, $4,000, and then it also includes freight, which freight costs were probably, depending on where you had to get this shipped to, that could be four or $500 on top of that. And then there's the $4,800 D24E1 W. A. Now, this was listed as a WU, but it's a WA. So the difference there would be the U is a universal, and it comes with a universal power supply that goes from 120 volts, and it will even do the 240 volts, I believe. Now, just so you know, I'm doing this for my memory. So if I'm wrong on that one, please feel free to leave a comment and correct me, but I believe that's correct. The A is a region that has a higher voltage only i think like australia maybe i'm not positive on that one or asia but it needs a 200 plus volt power source so uh, if you were to buy this one and you were not in these i'm going to guess it's an asian for the a but since this was sold in or out of hong kong that's going to need that step up transformer which you can get on like Amazon or eBay, you can get a good step up transformer for about $100, just so you know, to use with those BVMs that might only support power that is again over the 110, 20 volts that is standard in the American power supply. Now, we're going to jump over to Sony PVM CRT sales. We've got a heck of a lot more data for these numbers. We're going to start with the illustrious 8 inch PVM. Uh, these are all 8 inch RGB PVM sales and I've got them broken down by month to month here and we had three sales in October, eight sales in September, nine in August, three sales in July and if you want to pause it and take a look at any of these pricing uh, figures right here this will show you all those sales exact numbers we got 9L2 listed 8045Q. 44Q and 41Q. I will tell you that the 45Q does have a higher TV line count on the tube and a higher resolution, pretty much. And that's why you'll notice that it tends to sell for a lot more than the others. Most of the 44 and 41Qs were going between 180 to 250, maybe. And then the 8045Qs were going for more. But the 9L2, sometimes if you, you should look out for those, those are pretty good. If you're looking for one, the only thing about those is you do need a 129X clone card or regular card to get RGB and component support out of that monitor. I want to show you the biggest 8-inch sales first off. And what you'll notice about these is they're all going to be listed as working, tested, and the majority of them were not only in really good shape, but they inclu included some high quality custom cases for them. And those are pictured here, two different ones. Let's look a little bit closer at this listing. First off, this one was one that was a bid, 8045Q, uh, eight inch. And it came with, again, that great case, the zipped up case. It had some cables that went with it. And this one went for just over $400 total when you combine the shipping and the bid costs and then another one that just went for a lot of money i was really surprised at this one too now this was probably because it was listed again as tested and if you look at this listing it's kind of unique so props to the lister here because they managed to get a really high rate for their monitor almost 460 dollars which is more than i've probably ever sold at eight inch for uh so kudos and then we've got another one here that went for 13 bids. All these are those 8045Qs. And this one, again, included another nice case, just like the last one. Uh, but again, almost $600 for this little one. And that's just incredible. So that's just some of the 8-inch monitor sales. Let's move up to the bigger format. 
which is the 13 inch screen, but it will be listed as a 14 or 13 in the number series. Uh, we're going to look just at the 13s here that were in the United States, but this is this 13 series could have a 14 if you were in Europe or a different region in front of it instead of that 13. So just take note of that if you're looking for a PVM, as long as the numbers that are on the second half of that match, then it's going to be pretty much the same model. So we've got all kinds of different 13 inch model series here. We've got 12 total sales and the one that's listed for the lowest is a pickup of $161. That was a 1390, and it is this one pictured right above my head here with the gauntlet screen. So that's even better that it was tested. And so that was the one that was the low sale. The high sale would have been $563, a shipped 1354Q, which is the other pictured monitor here. So we're looking at these 13-inch models. Now, this is a wide range of models, but you've got basically the 4 Series, the 5 Series, a couple of 90s, but the most of them are 4s and 5s. So the 4s and 5s all support uh, RGB, and some of them will support components. Some of them will have better support for additional inputs and higher line counts on the tubes than others, but... They all, for the most part, are RGB monitors with a couple more features. Nice, really good starter monitors, but they are averaging about $360 on those 12 sales. So let's move on. Here's a look at this 1351Q that sold for $471, and it was uh, pictured with games on it. This one was a little bit more. Another MCOM Inc. listing here. A lot of people who've been searching online for... PVMs or BVMs will run into their listings, no doubt. They've been selling out of uh, New Jersey for years, and uh, they tend to sell their monitors for pretty close to the market rate and the higher end on that market rates. So just be aware of that. They do tend to list their monitors honestly most of the time from what I can tell. So that's good, but they are going to be up there in price generally. Let's get into the meat and potatoes now, which is the M series of the 14 inch. It's the most popular one. And you'll see that just by the number of sales listings here. Now, I want you to take a look. You see that October 1st one that I've got a or marked off, bought by RT. I actually bought two of those. I forgot to put down the second one, but you saw that unboxing video where it's 260 plus the little bit of tax I had to pay. And that was a good deal, but the lowest deal wasn't even that. It was a pickup on September 6th for $148. But man, there were some really, really expensive ones. M4s, if you have a good M4, there were plenty of those that were going for over $900. So it's still a monitor that sells a lot. And let's look at some of the higher end sales again. First off, an M2 that had free shipping, but it went for $600. From California, another listing that was tested but did not show any game pictures. Here we have a 14M4U for $895 from Kentucky, plus shipping there. So that's going to get you in the $900 range for that monitor. Another good working 14M4U. Now this one has pictures of it working, so this one should have sold probably pretty easily. It was a bad one. And you can tell, again, getting into that $900 range. So if we look at these sales, there's quite a bit. Again, of the M2, we've got 13 total sales, over $5,000 in just this one monitor. And our sales price, surprisingly not, is a little bit higher than the 13 and 14 series we just talked about, which is it's just over $400 average price on the M2. And I told you the lowest sale was just under $150 for a pickup, and the highest sale was at $600. If we look at the 14M4U, there's less sales, but there's always less listings of this monitor. Those sales totaled $3,538 with an average sales price of $708, lowest sale being $395, the highest being $9. 12. That's a pretty big swing right there if someone pays half the price that someone else does for the M4. And if we just go back to look at those sales, what times those took place, the M4 was way more recent, that third 395. That was on September 30th. So that's an incredible deal to find. So if you find those deals where somebody I'm sure listed it as a buy it now, you've got to just pounce on it and be ready to get it. And hopefully it gets shipped to you in one decent piece. 
Uh, 14 L2s, there were some sales of this. We had six of those monitors sold. And I was kind of surprised to see the price jump on this monitor because personally, I don't think the L2 is any better than the M series. And I would prefer personally, just me, I actually like the 1353 MD uh, over this monitor. And I definitely like both the M series monitors over this monitor. But since it is newer and it's an L series, it's the younger yeah, or I mean, it's more like the cheaper version of the L5 where they kind of just dropped all the high res tube and the uh, support for 480p and up resolution. This is just an analog only monitor. But again, we've got sales in $700 range, $600 range, and then a couple in the $400 range. This was one of the sales that went for about the highest 660 almost. That's pretty, pretty wild. It's not the highest, but it's one of them. So the lowest was 454. Average sale price of 635. That is really just too high, almost considering you could get an M2 or uh, M4 sometimes for almost that same price. And here's that 19-inch PVM sales getting into those bigger screens. Not a whole lot of movement here. Not a whole lot of listings. Uh, we had some 1954 Qs that were sold for 900 almost, 750 almost, and then 1600. I don't know what happened where somebody sometimes just gets so uh, enamored with one of these that they would pay almost $1,600 for just a 1954 Q, but that did happen. Here is a look at that sales listing. Uh, used very good condition. Like new, it was listed from close to me, somewhere in Virginia. For almost $1,600, just in, incredible. 20M2 and M4 and L2 sales. Again, not a huge amount of these 20-inch CRTs moving right now. And I think it's probably because there's just a lack of availability. Uh, and a lot of people don't want to ship these, which I don't even recommend shipping them unless you're only going to do it by freight because you're looking at a pretty high chance of a ground shipment carrier breaking your monitor, no matter how well you pack it. Now, the 20 M2s, we've got the first four listings were 20 M2s. Now, I do want you to notice that the lowest one on there, it really wasn't a sale that most people would want. It was a pickup only, and it was a parts listing where it didn't totally work right. The other ones are more normal, what you'd see for about that $800 price range. And I did not mention this at the beginning of the video, but I should have. Not really any of these outside of maybe one or two has actually been serviced. The one listing at the beginning by Save on Pat, which was a D20, was serviced. But outside of that one monitor, I don't believe any of these other ones are actually serviced. And I didn't see that in the listing. So I'm assuming that this, again, is unserviced. So you get these and you could still need to have them serviced. Uh, so just be aware of that when you're looking at a lot of these. So those are those M2 prices. 1M4, 525 for pickup. Again, this is just like that M4 that was sold for 395. This is one that went on line and it was 525. Buy it now, local pickup. And it's just somebody happened to be within either the town or driving distance there that really wanted it. And if it would have been, again, like myself, that's the kind of listing I would have gone after if I would have been, say, four or five hours driving away from this listing and I found it and it was working. And then you had a 20L2. Again, these L L2 series, they're just selling for a lot more right now. A new old stock listing for $3,000. That's just crazy kind of both that it was a new old stock and that it sold for $3,000. I couldn't really believe it. And then we had another one for almost 1,000. Let's look at just the 20 M2s. Look at some sales averages here. We've got a total of 2755 on the sales out of four sales. Average sales price is 689. And the lowest again was a pickup for repair. A lot of these looked just like this. The listings looked pretty much like this where it's a warehouse setting. Someone's come across one and lists it. And they generally list it for a price because they, they only show this one screen where it's barely where, you know, it's just the menu screen. And then here is this bought new. It's listed as 20L2. And it's obviously, I mean, it even needs a calibration for uh, geometry there. From Nebraska, it even has shipping charges there of $144. So again, congratulations on being able to move this. But it shows you that the price on these sometimes it, it's really condition dependent and it can jump. Let's look at something that I call my uh, secret 
PVM here. And I, I still can manage to find these for decent deals. You can even see where I bought that July 22nd OEV202. That's the one that's pictured on this slide with me. I did do that unboxing video for this monitor where I showed you how it was poorly packed. I do know the one that was a 201 that was sold right above it was sold by the same seller and that one was destroyed in shipping. So that person did have to go through a return and got their money back and uh, mine arrived safe. But these obviously sell for a lot less money. We've got a bunch of 20 inches there. The 203 is an PVM 20M2 MDU. So you're even getting the better M2 uh, if you go for this Olympus. That's what that one is. The 143 is a 14 inch model of that. And then the 203 is down here. Now the 202 is a Sony PVM 1953MD. And the OEV201, that's not a Trinitron at all. That's actually a Panasonic monitor. And it has a shadow mask tube and it is older than the other two series on there. And here's just another look at these Olympus monitors. Now we'll warn you that rarely are they ever listed with gaming pictures. These tend to be picked up by and resold by medical supply recyclers. And they will most of the time just have a picture of the monitor powered on and they'll show just like this, the menu. And not only that, I liked how I, I both these uh, listings had reflections of the guys listed in them in there. So I thought that was kind of funny. So if you pause that, you can actually see the dudes uh, bouncing the light off their, off that glass and getting themselves in the picture. So that was kind of funny. Now, before we jump all the way down, I went one too far. Let's take a look at these Sony PVM multi-format sales because I think this is one of the more important uh, listings and sales to uh, show you the L5. L5 is becoming one of the most sought after PVMs. And I just want you to notice there were six sales in there, but there's a gap where you know, these things come into stock and sometimes they come into stock right after each other and then they sell. And then there's a gap where there's just none available. And then it seems like they'll come back in stock in bunches. But the pricing here was anywhere from $1,200 up to $1,900 almost. And all of them were listed as good working. The average price is almost $1,600. That doesn't surprise me and almost ten thousand dollars in total sales so let's look at one of these 1405 listings this would have been one that was 1875 and it does have the goofy sidebars on it which are pretty much useless unless you want to rack mount the thing uh, it did include shipping and it did have a test screen up there of your stmp color bars so that's pretty impressive right there 34 bids and that was where somebody probably took advantage of the gap in availability on this monitor. And so uh, kudos again to them for getting a big sale. Let's look at the 20L5 sales because this one, it was actually intriguing to me to see so many not only uh, listed but sell. And if we just look at the pricing here, going back to July 9th, you know, we have nine sales, but they're going from 20 $500 pretty much all the way up to $3,100. And the vast majority of those were pickup only. The ones that were the four that were the most expensive that don't have a PU or pickup beside them were shipped. And those did tend to add a higher fee for shipping. And again, a, uh, I don't know, the average is obviously not correct there because it would be much higher. That must have been the average from the 14L5s. But the average price is obviously about $2,700 right now, maybe $2,800 on that monitor. Let's look at some of the better sales. This was a local pickup that had pictures of 480p running on the screen, had a lot of the uh, 240p test suite shots on there. Again, pickup only. It's obviously somebody who's got a collection of PVMs because I see a nice JVC monitor over here, as well as some other type of Trinitron down here, PVM. Uh, from San Jose, California, lots of these are listed out there, $2,500. All right, here's another one. This is from El Paso, Texas, and this one included a travel case. So that's very nice that it has that high-quality travel case. You can see it sitting on it right there. And this is another person I feel like probably has more than one of these monitors because I'm seeing other cases in the background. So that's probably a sign that they've got 
uh, either collect or offloading an extra or something. But again, whew, that's a high price one. Other CRT monitor sales, uh, there really wasn't a whole lot to talk about here. There was a couple, but not a whole lot. Pretty much irrelevant sales. Ikigami, there was a 14-17R. It does support 240p and 480i, and it does have RGB component. Um, the Ikigamis can be a little bit more hit or miss on just how the screen looks. It really depends on how they were used. This one was just a lower cost one, so 369 ship. That's a pretty good price. Now, the one I want to show you is the one in the other picture, this beautiful picture right here. This is, I mean, one of the most beautiful looking monitors. The JVC DTV 1710 CG multi format. Now, that is a, I believe that's a 16 inch tube. And that one sold for almost, or just over $2,700. I want to show you that listing because I really liked it. It's from Forest Hills, New York. Again, a fellow gamer had a lot of excellent, um, excellent excellent pictures and a, a fantastic listing this is one of the most descriptive and detailed listings i'd ever seen and it was sold pretty recently from what i can remember no yes august it still might be available on ebay so if you want to go back and you're in the united states go back and find this you can see all this incredible details this person knew a lot about this monitor and um i just love it i love how it says victor up here and DTV, it just has a really cool looking front on there. Uh, that's one that I've never gotten, but it's one that I'd like to eventually get, obviously, someday and work on it. So let's take a look at some key analysis and takeaways. My goodness, we looked at 104 Pro CRT sales analyzed prices. They're still going up. They're not really going down. And uh, now I will mention this. It does seem from a lot of the data I looked at that we did have a price peak towards the summer months where it was July and then early August. And then it's cooled a little bit. So the prices have appeared on a lot of um, analog PVMs on eBay to have gone down a little bit, maybe from their peak again in July and August and September and October. There seemed to be more reasonable sales that month. But the multi-format CRTs have increased in price pretty exponentially. Uh, all of those are getting harder and harder to get, and they're definitely more desirable. And a lot of those are pushing a price point of almost $3,000 just to start on a 20-inch one. And then if you're looking at a lot of those 14-inch ones, uh, the A-Series is expensive. The 14L5 is expensive. Uh, the best chance you might get to find a deal, for some reason, people just don't buy the D14 as much, and it since, tends to sell for a little bit less. Now, I do feel that it is not as good of a monitor to me as the A-Series. If you get an A-Series with Martin's 68X clone card, that's going to be better monitor most of the time than the D9, I feel like. And um, I know that, again, that might just be a little bit of a personal thing. I just like the way it's constructed. It's constructed more along the lines of the older BVMs. The D14 was kind of its own little thing. It's more of a modified almost. It's kind of like a hybrid is what I consider it compared to the A series and then the F, G, all the other ones and the E series that would have been other BVMs before the D that came out. The best deals are still always local sales. There are plenty of other ways to find deals and find sales and find uh, places, you know, to buy these than just eBay. So definitely look on other marketplaces. I find a lot of these things on Facebook sometimes under their marketplace in my area. You know, you could also look on Craigslist still offer up and other sales groups. We do have sales groups on my Patreon that we all share listings if we're not buying them. So there's still opportunities out there and there again, all of them are always going to be local and you're definitely going to take away all the risk or nearly all the risk there when you get a local sale because you can go test the monitor and you don't have to ship it. Good things come to the persistent. Random great deals are available on eBay. I think I have proven that over the summer by buying in the last quarter three different PVMs. And uh, now they do need some level of work and I'm capable of that. So that's a little bit of fortunate for me, obviously. But if you're handy and you want to, again, can use a lot of the tools that uh, I've provided and that are documentation online and you have experience working on electronics, you can get a decent deal on a PVM. Restored monitors will sell for more than these prices. 
If you have a restored monitor and you want to sell it on eBay, you should consider these prices and, you know, go a little bit over that. I, I, I just, it's worth more if you have one, even if it's just a deflection cap kit that's been done and it's been cleaned, it, sh it should go for more than what the normal rate is for something that's not been touched really other than to power tested or just a little bit of light testing done. So supplies are extremely limited and larger and better monitors are f hard to find. Uh, we could see that. And when they were available, they were sold. You could see a lot of tw less 20 inches. There weren't even a whole lot of sales over 20 inches uh, on eBay, not very many at all. And there's just not a lot of listings on there anymore. And not for PVMs, BVMs, and other high-end monitors. Most top-end monitors, again, they won't be shipped. And that's a, probably a good thing. And if they are shipped, again, we need to go freight on all those. Because there's a huge risk uh, of always having your stuff damaged by a ground shipment company. But hey, guys, look, that's the whole uh, shebang for this quarter's look at some of the numbers uh please if you have any specific pvm or bvm you want to look at you know go back through the presentation freeze it and um, take a look at that data take a snapshot and then compare it to what you're seeing as far as things that are coming available for sale in october november and december of this year and just try to take these tips learn this knowledge and make an informed best decision for yourself because obviously like i said there's a wide spectrum on some of these sales where there's not a big difference in quality sometimes or there is a big difference in quality sometimes you don't really know unless you actually get in there and research these listings a lot don't be afraid to reach out to the sellers and try to get more data from them if they're not going to give you a lot of data don't be afraid to let the deal pass and wait for something else i feel like patience is still a big helping point. And finally, uh, I'm going to give you a little plug here for my Patreon page. If you need help with further tips on specific listings, you, I have plenty of Patreon members that send me listings asking me what I think about things as far as like a sale price for a monitor. They also like to know uh, what I think of the condition of the monitor is a fair deal. What will it need after they buy it? And we also, again, have the network in my uh, private discord that we share our listings that we find and again that could be all over the internet and all over the world uh, for pvms bvms and other crts it's a pretty awesome crt community so thank you again to all the people that have supported this channel through the years and are part of that and thank you again to you for watching this extremely long and detailed analysis of our crt market I will see you all next time. Let me give you, actually, before I jump off here, a little preview of what you got coming up. I do have a restoration coming on a 14L5 monitor. Uh, that should be out after this one. And then I think after that, we'll have a PBM that I bought for incredibly cheap off eBay. But, man, it's a, it's a pretty good story. So it's like a 1343MD, one of those really old no service menu monitors, so it's probably going to need a lot of work. Thank you again. I'll see you all next time with some more retro content.